six brothers riding away for thousands of years peacefully in their crypts, and only one hero can disturb their peace, slaughter them for a second time, and then proceed to rob their belongings. And this hero is known as... That's right, this year Easteris came early, or should I say late, and with the goal for the lowest combat level in mind, I welcome you back to my series. Lower. Better. Chest bra. So the Barrows Brothers crypts here are not very well secured, and I mean you can literally just dig once with a spade on this giant mound, then boom, you're inside and ready to ruin their day. Now, don't be like a Barrows Brother when it comes to your online security, because well, your day could similarly be ruined if your online information was just dug up, even though hopefully it wouldn't be straight out of the ground. On a real note, the best way to protect your online information is with some great software called Dashlane. Dashlane is our sponsors once again for this episode of Lower the Better, and I have to say they honestly just have a wonderful product which I love promoting. Dashlane is a password and security management software which allows you to auto-generate and save unique passwords. Your generated information is saved so that you can instantly fill out forms and logins across all of your devices within usually just a couple of clicks. Not only does Dashlane do this with passwords, but it literally will keep any major piece of information you would ever need safe within one location while at the same time holding the highest levels of encryption. One of the best perks that Dashlane also has is dark web monitoring, which notifies me almost instantly if a database leak has occurred and if one of my passwords are at risk for being compromised. As well, a nice VPN is provided within the software for extra security and private browsing. So remember, they are our wonderful sponsors for this episode, and if this product interests you, then you can try them out for free on your first device by going to dashlane.com forward slash rindy. So yes, you read that transition correctly. This is actually going to be a two-part video, as I felt neither part was enough to make the cut for standalone content. If you wish to only watch the Barrows content though, I'll put a timestamp below, although you'll be missing out on a lot of the discoveries I had in the week prior. So ironically enough, someone just asked me in the comments section the other day how often my plans for a video fall through, and of course the answer was not very often. That is until I started recording my original plans for this specific video. These plans were to attempt to use the tournament beta worlds that were open across the entire global map of RuneScape, to therefore take on some Slayer bosses solo on a combat level 3 I would otherwise not ever have the chance of completing in a regular world. This is because, well, we're 6 years into the live game, and I believe the highest Slayer on a level 3 is only 81 as of this moment, and well, that doesn't really fit into my 2 week time requirement. And in tournament worlds, you can literally set custom stats, so I could just level instantly to 99 Slayer whilst remaining level 3. Therefore, as a level 3 and doing it solo, I went about testing many of these Slayer bosses in the first week. Unfortunately, I quickly saw that most of these bosses would be impossible to complete at level 3, and I narrowed it down to 2, which eventually even went down to 1. And the first of these two Slayer bosses at the time I believed to be possible was that of the Kraken. So in a tournament world, yes, a lot of items are given to you, but unfortunately the main items I need are missing from the entire server, and that would be, well, purple sweets. So instead, I literally picked cabbages for hours and put them into sacks, and would basically have to die with them inside the room to stack a good amount of them on the floor. Also, well, if you log out in these worlds, or have your screen freeze randomly like mine after almost two hours of picking cabbages, you lose all progress and everything is reset whenever you log back in. So after finally spending hours of getting these cabbages ready, my damage plan was to then set up a cannon, make cannonballs, and then summon the tentacles one at a time and allow for my cannon plus recoils to finish each of these tentacles off before even summoning the final kraken. And I could do this with the cannon because the tentacles give zero combat XP when attacking them. So yes, I found out you can set up a cannon in here on two specific back tiles in the room weirdly enough but this cannon can't reach the most northeastern tentacle or the Kraken's head. So my plan was to then deal with both of those separately, 
solely using eats and tick eats along with recoils. After finishing the last tentacle with recoils, I moved on to the Kraken itself, and to my dismay, found out that its attack had zero delay between its animation and calculation, and even worse, its attack speed was so rapid that it would calculate damage on your prior HP when it would fire on you. So even with stalls and food to upscale my HP for every hit, well, with 10 HP you can only do this so much, and therefore I deem this to be impossible as well. In my prior testing I totally missed this, because oddly enough, when you are protecting magic against his attacks, they are more delayed and actually have ticks between when he fires an animation and when the attack actually hits you. But since I was now level 3 with no protect, somehow the projectile was instant and therefore my plans were ruined. Although my first goal was a failure, I still had a great time, and I did find some unique abilities in this room throughout testing, and it was quite an experience. One of the most hilarious finds included discovering a way to melee the Kraken, even though you will always hit zeros, similar to the smaller ones in the other room. And now I would move on to test the next boss which I believe to be possible, and hopefully this one would actually just die. So the very first property I noticed about the thermonuclear smoke devil was that it attacks you very quick, firing every two ticks. But I also noticed that if you manage to stand on the square next to Thermo versus any of the ones further back, there actually is a singular tick of clearance before his next attack calculates damage on you. This means if I stay on the tile next to the smoke devil, then I will be able to tick eat his hits if I time this perfectly without him calculating damage on my prior HP like some other fast firing NPCs in the game. But even though now this damage will calculate correctly if I'm in the right placement, there is still one major problem. I will need to find a food that has a one tick cooldown because Thermo's attacks fire one tick while hitting me the next tick. Then the attack cycle repeats at this rapid rate, meaning I only have one tick to spare between eats if I'm going to tick eat and use recoils to kill this boss. Unfortunately, you would think a food like this does not exist in RuneScape since at least the Guthix Rest nerf of 2015. Food like pizzas or pies can have this effect, but only for two consecutive bites. Therefore, if I was to use pizza, well, the third bite would basically kill me. Luckily, years ago when I was doing my low level fire cape challenges, I needed a food that would replace the Guthix Rest after its initial patch, and therefore, this made me go through almost every obscure food in the entire game to test the cooldowns between each bite. And guess what? After going through literally every food in the entire game, I found one. And when I say one, I mean one, as there's only one in the entire game left. Cooked crab meat. Yep, the most obscure food in the game, and its raw version is not even tradable. So now I would hunt down some crab on these tourney worlds, cook them, and purposely die with several inventories on the ground to allow enough food to recoil the entire 240 HP that Thermo has. From here on these same worlds, I would proceed to make opal bolts which have a 5% chance of rolling a 1 or 0 with their special attack. Even on a true 0 hit this is possible. I would use these bolts to hit the 1 damage in order to get the KC as well as the drop. And here's how the whole kill played out.
Gotta hurt. So before even looking into how I was going to go about creating this account, I first tried finding new ways to get into Mortania as a combat level 3. Unfortunately, none of the methods I tested to get access back into Mortania worked as expected, and therefore I would have to move on to Plan B, otherwise known as looking like a disgusting level 4. This is because the old methods were patched long ago around the same time my last video was released within this area. Also by the way, I noticed now that the Haunted Mind Quest journal no longer even says access to Mortania as a requirement. But hilariously enough, has been changed to distinctly say Priest in Peril. Now this isn't even a joke, but this level 4 Barrows run would have been next to impossible if I didn't have access to a giant egg. Yep, the same one that's a giant useless and hilarious looking fun weapon from the 2019 Easter event. I'll get into the specifics on why I need this later, but basically, where the hell am I going to find a level 3 that hasn't gained combat XP since the event in April, and actually has it completed? Well fortunately, a friend of a friend had an account they would let me use for this task. And even though this account was a little scuffed with 2 attack instead of 1 to start, it was still a level 3, and would still be level 4 after Priest's Imperial completion. It would just need, well, a name change. Now for the other requirements I deem necessary for this goal, I would basically have to do Dwarf Cannon Quest, then up to the part of the Dwarf for Recipe for Disaster with Fishing Contest in order to access a Rock Cake. And lastly of course, I would just have to complete Priest in Peril. After all of these quests, although now I had a scuffed level 4 with 2 attack and 11 prayer, I would be ready to take on disturbing, killing, and robbing all six of the Barrows brothers at the lowest combat possible. Now the first Barrows brother I was going to be dealing with was actually one of the more difficult ones of the six, being Darok. But I wanted to go ahead and get him over with so I could get some muscle memory for the method I would be using for the majority of these fights. Why Darok was so much more difficult than some of the others, well, one he was a melee NPC, and two he had a slower 7 tick attack speed. The fact that he is a melee NPC matters because traditionally speaking you are not able to tick eat melee attacks because the damage registers the same tick the NPC attacks you. and I needed a way to kill this NPC without gaining too much EXP so I could remain for combat. Poison was first considered since these NPCs are not immune, well until I realized he along with all of the other brothers have around level 100 defense and 252 stab defense bonus. Since I am only 2 attack, even if I use super attack potions and all of my best gear while on accurate, well I'm still only looking at around a 1 in 100 chance at hitting Darok or even worse, a 1 in 400 chance at poisoning him. And the fun only continues, as if I took this route, I would have to poison him at least twice in order to kill any of these brothers since they are 100 HP. This means on average he would naturally heal back to full HP before I could even get a second poison hit off on him. Making poison reliance for a kill pretty much impossible and requiring extremely unlikely RNG at these low stats. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention? Well the worst part about every single one of these NPCs is that no matter what, they despawn in 10 minutes. So guess what, my only other option was to use recoils to lower his HP, and well, I'm 10 HP, this guy maxes 64s, and all with melee. Therefore I would need to find a way to somehow tick eat his melee attacks and finish him off in under 10 minutes time. And here is where the giant egg comes into play as a necessity. It is literally the only item in the game a level 3 can use which will allow you to stall inside of combat, besides an elemental shield. Almost all stalls in the game are disabled in combat, but luckily for us this giant egg has some crazy perks, and that's just one. 
by putting two stackable interfaces behind a stall such as the easter egg or elemental shield in combat, one of these interfaces will close on the exit of the stall before the damage tick registers on your character, allowing you exactly one tick to eat your food before melee damage affects you. As well, the only stackable interface you can use behind these stalls on a combat level 3 or 4 is that of the chat message which pops up when selecting a locked prayer, so I will 100% need to utilize these. Now here is where the egg is superior over the elemental shield. The egg is a 10 tick stall while the shield is only 2 ticks, and these crypt rooms actually lower your prayer and you need at least one prayer point for prayer to count as a stackable interface, or the interface will never pop up at 0. While stalled in interface though, prayer will not drop in this room until the stall has completed. And since the shield is only a 2 tick stall, my prayer will drop between almost every attack, requiring me not to only perform constant double interface tapping, stall timing and tick eats in short periods, but also somehow require multiple inventories of prayer potions and using these prayer potions likely at inconsistent times. So by using my upcoming egg method instead of the shield, I will roughly only have to use prayer pots one fifth of the time, and I will have small breather times to use these prayer pots consistently. As well, I will have to summon Darok on each of my attempts and hope that he doesn't hit over my max HP on his first attack while just trying to start the kill, which he probably did over 100 times. So here is how it's going to work. After taking the initial hit from Darok, I will make sure I sit at 1 HP by shift click guzzling the rock cake before stepping out in front of Darok each time. From here I will shift click stall with the egg and then tap two interfaces all before his first hit registers on me so I am not stacked out after the stall finishes. And after that first egg animation completes, I will loop it then into a second stall with the first stackable interface to allow for my prayer to last longer. Finally, after all of the 20 ticks, 2 egg stalls and 3 attacks from Darok, I will quickly use the second interface I stack in order to stall the melee damage tick, tick eat higher than the 3 1 to 2 hits that Darok will do on me with a chocolate cake since this heals 5 HP over the previous 3 attacks, then instantly run the next tick while prayer potting and repeat the process as quickly as possible. This took hours of muscle memory to commit, and I actually ended up dying many many times from many simple mistakes, mostly involving prayer. But I quickly realized, the 7 attack speed on Darok was what was hurting me the most, as it would be almost impossible, even with all of this, while taking 3 hits at a time and dealing 3 damage in return, to kill him in under 10 minutes before he despawns. And finally, as my last resort, I called upon an old friend for some help. With Chesbra's Venge Alts, I was now able to deal 4 damage per cycle versus the prior 3, and even this was cutting it close. But finally, after what seemed like hundreds of attempts, this was the outcome. Chesbra.
Finally, at his last HP, I will quickly use his weakness to magic to get the one true hit on this NPC, all to try and kill him with registered KC in under 10 minutes total time. See you in hell. So yes, that counted. And now that I've killed one brother, only five more to go. Fortunately for me though, a lot of these tactics I used on Darox will now be used with some of the next few brothers, but with just slight adjustments. For a fraction of time now though, we're putting this egg to rest, and taking a little bit of a breather by disturbing and killing a couple of the easier brothers to get along with at level 4 combat and these would be Carol and Aram. These bosses both use projectiles instead of melee attacks, meaning I can tick eat them normally due to there being a few ticks between the projectiles and damage registering on my character. Although, I will still have to do that one damage on each of their NPCs to get the KC, but luckily my plan is to simply auto-retaliate while using Opal Bolt's Enchanted. This will once again give me that 5% chance of hitting a 1 or 0 even on a missed hit. So after finishing off Carols and Arams, I would next take on Guthans, and well, I had no clue what I was in for. So this didn't even cross my mind, but Guthans has a 25% chance to heal himself for the damage dealt. And after testing this with my egg method along with Chesbra's Venge Alts, well we were almost at a stalemate with his HP after 10 minutes. This meant, Guthans would barely even drop his HP before his despawn timer hit at 10 minutes. So, I would have to theorycraft a whole other way to take on this boss, which was probably the most annoying in terms of having the largest toll on my patience. Basically the only way to kill this boss in time was to try and hit my luck at that 1 in 400 chance at poison. This was once again not going to be an easy task because of Guthans insane defense bonus and defense level facing off against my low level stats. But do you remember how I said it would be near impossible for me to poison these Barrows Brothers twice in a 10 minute time span? So instead I found a way to theoretically get around this impossible double poison method by utilizing a cannon and hoping to deal at least 8 damage because the poison tick clearing only does 92 damage to his total 100 health. This would be possible because Guthans range defense bonus was not nearly as much as his stab and my cannon revolves faster than my ability to melee flinch him on the corner of these tombs. Now, I could only use this method with one of the brothers because 1. it was extremely time consuming, and 2. I had too little EXP and almost every combat stat to spare on any other of the brothers before reaching that even more disgusting 5 combat. And Guthans, by far, was the best choice to do it on. As well, to increase my chance of rolling a 1 damage hit with my poison dagger, I would use a super combat potion and increase my strength as well as attack so I could then roll a 0, 1, and 2 on a successful hit rather than just a 0 or 1, upping the likelihood to hit by about 33%. Lastly, I would also have to poison Guthans within a 2 minute time span of him spawning. 
This is because on average it would take 8 minutes to tick Guthin's HP down enough with one singular poison roll. This is because once again I only have 10 minutes before his despawn timer takes effect, clearing him from the room entirely. This all means that I would have to reset Guthin's spawn every 2 minutes and risk that chance of being one hit the tick he spawns almost 10 times as much as the prior Darok brother. So therefore combining the fact that I had to spawn Guthans and risk death so much more often, as well as the fact that getting even a singular poison hit off with my dagger was around a 0.325% chance on average, well, long story short, I would be flinching this damned thing for about 12 hours straight with 8 unsuccessful poison hits from the dagger and around 150 first attack deaths from Guthans. Now I would just have to get rid of Torag, and this method I would use was one similar to that of what I used with Darok. There was only two differences. The first was that Torag attacked with a 5 tick attack speed instead of a 7 tick attack speed like Darok, meaning I can recoil even more damage with 4 total hits per egg stall and making it a quicker kill. The second was that Torag had a chance of lowering your run energy, so an extra stamina was necessary. To be fair though, I probably should have brought more than just one extra. Lastly, I would just have to head into the crypt, where literally almost every NPC can just one hit me. So I actually found a foolproof way to navigate these tunnels with literally zero damage taken from any NPC, making me almost wish this entire task was possible on a hardcore. First, I would need to find worlds with no one in them, preferably PvP worlds. This is because every time someone runs through a door in the crypt, it will spawn an NPC, and this NPC can aggress even you. Fortunately for me though, I found an empty PvP world and proceeded into the first room where I went AFK for a couple of minutes. Chest rock. Now to navigate these doors, I would need to find a way to avoid spawning the NPCs that can one-hit my character. For the first few doors, I would do this by one tick fake logging, similar to how you've seen me do it in prior videos. Basically I would click log out and then instantly click the dungeon door. Unfortunately though if I log back in, the NPC would still be spawned and attack me. So I would simply hop worlds to enter a room with zero NPCs spawned in the entire area. Finally at the last passageway and after hopping many many times, I would need some assistance, as the four rooms closest to the crypts are swarming with NPCs, and the assistance I needed was unlikely to be found, as I needed to find someone within 15 combat levels of me who had access to Barrows and Mortania. Remember this guy? Well now he's came back to perform one last job. 
hit me once with a crier bell. From here, I would use the egg stall on egg boy leet with two interfaces behind it, attack myself once on mine shafted with the crier bell, then spam the logout button back on egg boy leet. What I am doing here is delaying mine shafted's attack by one tick with the interface stall, similar to melee tick eating, but instead, I will utilize this tick the game recognizes myself as out of combat in order to trigger a short fake log similar to those done by projectile based NPCs. This is all possible because a fake log as short as it is in this aspect makes the game think you are logged out and no NPCs can target you as well as vice versa. So in my testing, I noticed Varox or the NPC's crypt you entered to get into this dungeon will spawn the tick you open the chest. Meaning this NPC can one hit me like all of the others in their crypts almost instantly. Fortunately for me on this attempt though, it did not. But I wasn't ready for this fight the first time around and neither was Chesbra who failed to even venge me on the first hit. Chesbra. So I logged out from here and totally forgot the chest stays open. And from here, I proceeded to resummon Varax, but well, instead, I looted the damn chest. And hey look, a Carol's crossbow. All of this was totally worth it. Anyways, I'm not backing out of this fight, and there is one last brother I need to exterminate. So we're heading back into the crypts for one final battle. And there you have it, all 6 Barrows Brothers killed and robbed on a level 4 account, the lowest level to do so in the entire game. Of course, this was all done with the help from a lot of patience and a nice looking egg. If you guys are enjoying the series, once again a subscription is greatly appreciated, and I still will be changing my name to Rendy if I ever hit that 1 million sub count. And if you haven't noticed, well, my ability to now take sponsors has helped out not only my personal well-being, but also the quality of these videos. This is because I'm already almost reinvesting everything back into these videos, from new editing software, royalty-free music subscriptions, better audio hardware, and even commissioned graphics for this channel, as well as for individual videos. Speaking of commissioned graphics, did you all see my new logo, banner, and the Eggboy Leak graphic? Well, you can thank 7th Sleeper. The man has some real talent, and I'll put his links in the description below. Once again, thank you all for the support, and I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see you next time on Lower the Better.